How are you learning to better manage and motivate teams? You hire really, really, really good people. Hire people that are better than you are. Uh, all of my employees at my IDU, so much better than I am. Um, and then you do your best to get everyone out of their way. You get all of the roadblocks out of the way. In many respects, you do all of the things um, that are not very fun so that your team can, can excel so that they don't have to deal with them. Um, and if you do that, and the problem is interesting, and the compensation's okay, I don't think you need to do a lot of motivating. And I don't need to do any managing. Um, this idea that I can manage another person, I think maybe is a little antiquated. Um, they manage themselves. Mm -hmm. You can manage situations. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, you know, there's interpersonal issues in any organization, but if the quality of the work is really good and you have that sort of strategic buy-in that we talked about, this like, oh, I have a seat at the table, um, in many ways you have a big red ball, right? Just do it because I said so. That's sometimes enough to get that runway so that your really good team can go execute. Um, motivation for designers is interesting. Most of the designers that are really good that I know are motivated by really hard problems uh, and really big impact. And that big impact can be scale, it can be depth, but it's like um, the problem was really hard, the, the pro, uh, process of solving it was super satisfying, and then it's out in the world and it's having the, the impact it needs to have. Um, and the more that impact is tied to a meaningful metric, like a social and humanitarian metric versus just a financial metric, the more designers seem motivated on their own. Um, that I don't, I don't necessarily need to do a lot of cheerleading, which mm -hmm. is which is great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And from a, uh, right, a management or advisory perspective, where do your employees ask you for help? Uh, it's usually with with the interpersonal stuff. Uh, I mean, very rarely does it have anything to do with the actual design problem. It's with stakeholders. It's with how do we communicate um, that a direction has changed. It's with, uh, you know, this guy had a really great idea, or so he thinks. Um, and and usually those are, those are conversations that are easy to have in retrospect, but extraordinarily difficult to broach. Um, and so we talk through, you know, what's the strategies for... Uh, how do you tell somebody that their idea is no good so that they come out a friend of yours at the end? Um, because it's okay to have really bad ideas. Designers have bad ideas all the time. Um, it's how you feel at the end of discovering that your idea is bad. Do you feel deflated and you're done? Or do you feel you know built up? Like, okay, that idea, bad. I'm going to have another idea and I'm still going to share it. Um, and and uh, you know that's the kind of thing that I suppose the more experiences you have doing, the better you can guide somebody with. Um, you know, So the more difficult situations you either diffuse successfully or unsuccessfully the more you can talk about difficult situations and that's the kind of thing that we do. like if there's advisement it's, it's around those types of issues yeah.